these kinds of videos here, I show them to you in the hopes of uh, helping you uh, create content because we've said before uh, on social media to be active and I was and I wrote it over here as well um, once a month All right, I guess I was about to write it so um, create a video topic could be feature okay uh, goal uh, create a video on YouTube once per month. It just takes so much effort to create videos that it's perfectly fine that once a month you create something. There are people that create content much more often than that. Um, on my own personal fun stuff unrelated to businesses, one of my hobbies is comic books. I like to create videos about comic books. I have a collection that I've had for 30 years. So I create videos, at least one new video every week. Uh, on YouTube and I think that's a little too much nowadays but uh, I still I think it's fun and it's interesting and the point of me using my YouTube is uh, one I want to talk about my hobby and two uh, I make a little money off of that uh, putting my videos on YouTube so again we'll, we'll cover well how to monetize your site yes we'll cover how to pay YouTube to reach the right audience but you could also be making money off of your YouTube channel and we'll cover that now that we've got the, the two days to, to look at it um, we'll look at another one right here. How to video. Uh, I really like this one as an example um, of kind of like a quality video. Um, you don't have to be discouraged on looking at other people's videos and seeing, wow, they look so professional. I could never do that. What kind of camera do they have? Um, you have these barriers to entry that are pretty low because I, everyone probably has a, a, a pretty good camera in their pocket or, or purse. Uh, this does very well but let me show this as an example and I'll break it down to you in terms of like cinematography speak to tell you uh, what's so good about this one so let's watch it a moment then I'll explain it Celeste with E.B. Stone and today we're hi I'm Celeste with E.B. Stone and today we're gonna be talking about how to plant tomatoes first you want to plan the location for your vegetables make sure this spot gets at least six hours of sunlight there are several different ways you can plant tomatoes. You don't need a huge yard to grow your own food. You can plant in rows, containers, or in raised beds. So this video so far is one of the best ones I've shown, and it'll probably be one of the best ones I show in all of these six in terms of cinematography. Sounds like a very fancy word, but that's just simply, you know, what are you looking at? The first thing you see, just a moment ago, the camera was set up in a way that it was uh, a bust shot, you know, up from here. Uh, and then, do you see for a moment, it got in close to her talking. Here is a photo. Okay, here's the close-up shot. There's a photo. That's a still photo they're zooming into. Here's another still photo that they're rotating on and zooming out and text on the screen. So, looking at it without sound, you can focus on the visuals. Here, someone is standing with the camera a little bit back, and then a little bit close, and then back to that kind of shot right there. This is a, in the one hand, a technically complex video, but on the other hand, it's not that complex if I explain what you're looking at. Getting in close to the person, standing back from the person, putting a photo, putting text. People can do this. Anyone can do this. I record uh, myself talking about something, I get closer to the camera, I change the angle, and I edit it all together in Movie Maker, in iMovie, in Premiere, in any of that software. All through, all the while, we've got and you want to plan on music in the Next, background. Next, we're going to sprinkle start around the roots. It'll we've got music in the background, we had text appearing here and there. This one is uh, four minutes long. This is explaining something to do, but visually it's a very interesting looking video. It does take a lot of effort to record and to edit, but um, the payoff could be, uh, for example here, 65,000 views. Um, at the very end, We have a recap. 
Today's how-to video is provided by E.B. Stone. Location, at least six hours of sunlight. Pick the right. This is a commercial. This is advertising E.B. Stone brand plant food. They're showing you for three minutes how to plant a tomato, and then for one minute, they're advertising their own product. It goes on this way too. These are the featured products from today's video. Click on them to learn more or click below in the description for a free PDF recipe. So there is the ability on YouTube to set up, you say click here for more. There is the ability to click on the video to go to a, an address. Um, you do that in YouTube, uh, and we'll, we'll cover it of course. But this is a great example that I like to show uh, that really does it right in that it's visually interesting, the sound is good, and it's, it's a stealth commercial. It is teaching you how to do something, but all the while, you're going to get the best tomatoes if you use our plant food. <clears throat> so with the so tips for a great video vary the, the shots. Uh, and that's simply, that's as simple as slightly moving your camera, getting closer, standing back. Very the shots. Keep it looking interesting. If you just turn on the camera, and I sit down right here, and I'm by the window, and I'm talking for 10 minutes, that's probably not going to be a very good video in terms of views and the traffic that you're looking for. If instead I change it up a little bit, that maybe I stand at a different background, or get the camera closer, uh, or maybe even go handheld and such. Um, that, that could be more visually interesting. Uh, do you see that on some shots the camera is perfectly still? They obviously have it on a tripod. And then right here it's a little shaky. Uh, they're, they're obviously holding it where our little muscle tremors uh, show up on the camera right there too. So putting uh, your camera on a tripod for a little bit and then holding it handheld, that's a way to uh, get the two different shots there. Uh, they do sell adapters, uh, universal adapters for any cell phone that can attach to a tripod. So if you have a tripod for a, a regular camera, video camera, um, you know, photo camera, DSLR, uh, they they sell these little like uh, little like, like clip adapters that you clip onto any cell phone, and then they screw onto the the head of your um, tripod, and then you have a perfectly stationary uh, shot from your phone which is probably better quality than any video camera you've ever had. You know, these might record in 4K quality and all of that. So, do you see also um, the, the, the video is well lit? So, vary the shots, use a tripod if necessary. Some of the modern video, uh, some of these cell phones, they have built-in stabilization that can work pretty well, that uh, it'll smooth out the vibrations a bit, but still, if you have a tripod and if you have the adapter, uh, it can have rock-solid uh, video quality. Uh, have good lighting, basically no flash, unless you have a good flash and you know what you're doing. Uh, so. This is being shot outside. It seems to be kind of a little overcast. The light is good. There's no harsh shadows. Uh, what people really do badly all the time is I'm in my office, the window's behind me, and I'm recording myself right here, and I'm way too dark in the shot because the, the background is so bright, it's confusing the sensor, and the background is nice and visible, but then I'm way too dark because of backlighting. Okay, the way to fix that, it's, it's very complex. You go like this, you turn around because then now the light is coming this way and the recorder is recording me here and the light is on me perfectly. If I'm simply the wrong way like this, the light is in the wrong direction, I'm getting recorded here and then it looks terrible. So simply turning toward your light source can really, really help. So have good lighting. And then the flash and continuous light. Uh, usually those aren't that good, so no flash. Um, so I, I would really look at this video at, at your own pace uh, to um, see what's this as an example as a, as a good video. 
it doesn't work for everyone. This uh, makes sense in the terms of showing you how to do something in the outdoors. But let's say I'm making some videos, some of these little stealth commercials for my Victor's Bakery. Well, I could be recording a few things in the kitchen and then talking to the camera and saying, this month we are having our offers. Uh, and don't forget to use offer code XYZ. Well, you could embed you know, an offer code in your video in the terms of mentioning it or actually writing it on the text there, on the video. Uh, you can use these in that sort of way. Promotions, advertising, and such. So, goal. How can any video you create be a stealth commercial? It's obvious which commercials are commercials on TV and such. They're trying to sell you something. But how can you create a video uh, giving away something for free, but also promoting yourself? Um, catching attention to sell something, either very obviously or not so much. This one here obviously is saying, buy our, our plant food. The next one is a review. Take a quick look at that one. Now notice there's uh, commercials playing on most of these before they start. Uh, quick note. So we'll come back to this idea. Um, monetization. Monetization. You can make money from your YouTube videos if you allow ads, advertising, on your video. And there's a whole topic we'll get to in all the nuances. But uh, if you put commercials on your videos, that leads to you earning money on your videos, which we'll cover in detail. Yeah? So if you are wanting to you know, embed a video on your website, and let's say you have a but you want it to just pop up You don't want them to jump to YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to still be able to like monetize the videos that are on the YouTube page, but not you don't want that ad? You know what? Um, no, I, I think if you choose to put ads on your videos, they have to show up always. I I think I think there's a deep setting. Now that I think about it, there might be a setting that you might be able to turn on. I have to double check it because I I usually. Uh, have monetization all the time just to capitalize as much as possible on making money off of the videos but I think now that you mention it there might be a button that you can turn on that makes the video not monetized outside of YouTube possibly so that's one way to not have their branding and such on your video but then you lose out on some of that monetization right but if it's for a client and you know their monetization is coming from their services, you yeah. know, their site versus just on their Yes. Library. Yeah, so that's the double-edged sword of this. This monetization is you can make money off of your videos, but it's in the form of ads, meaning you're going to be advertising, something else is going to be advertising on your own video, which may be irrelevant to the viewer or may actually be a competitor right. to your own video. So that, that is the double-edged sword. We don't have very much capability to choose that. We have the capability to choose when we boost our videos and such, we can target a demographic and a region and all of that perfectly. But we don't have the option to say what kind of video ads appear on our videos. So tip, I was gonna, I was gonna say a tip, but I forgot my tip. So that's okay. Yes? Who, now, would you just authorize YouTube to add videos and then maybe you get a pay every time? It's uh, basically when people click on the ad, not just view it. But we'll we'll get to it a little deeper. Like right here, uh, I was about to show off a video, then an ad is playing, and if I do click on their JC Penny link right there, basically the the ones that uploaded the video, CNET, they would get a cut of some of that profit from me clicking on the ad. If I simply watch it, they don't 
they don't get anything out of it. They get something out of it from an action, meaning I clicked on their site. Yes. Okay, so let's watch this one right here. here. From Hey guys, Brian Tong here from CNET.com and in my hands, yep, I have Google Glass. This really has the whole tech world buzzing and we wanted to really break down what this is. Now the first thing is not everyone can get a pair of these. You had to be part of Google's Explore program and they cost $1,500. They don't come cheap, but what this is really for is for developers, uh, you know, people that are trying to come up with new apps and ways to use the actual Google Glass. And what you see here is this is a frame here. It's not actually a pair of glasses. It's a thin titanium and sturdy frame. And what it does is it has this piece of glass right here. This is where an image is projected or kind of the heads up display for what you have here. So let me show you how these work. I'm gonna put these glasses on in, <laughs> Kev. I make these look good, check it out, all right? But the first thing you have to do is, first of all, you can either tap the side or do a little head bob, and it activates the screen. You can see it turn on, and I'm gonna start by saying, okay, glass, okay, let's give this a shot. Okay, glass, I have a variety of options, and here I'm gonna say, record a video. And you'll see my screen change, and now you guys can see what I see. I have Michael and Jay here. Hey, boys, say what's up, wave hi. There you go, right? Now, you can also do a lot of other things with this. You can um, use them for map directions. You can actually Google items, names, people, or places. And it does require a data connection, so that means you're gonna have to have a phone tethered to this over Bluetooth or even over Wi-Fi. So my first impressions of glass, I mean, these things are amazing. This is really the future, and we've never seen anything like this, but wearing them is, is a little socially awkward. Yo, Jay, what's up, bro? Can you take it later tonight, man? Yeah, yeah. that's pretty sick. Jay. But really, this is the future, and you know it's so. That's awesome. This is yes. This is uh, $1, for fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. You get a wearable computer. It records video. You can talk to it. It'll give you directions. You see a little screen in front of you. You get map directions and all of that. Uh, so this actually, this video is a little older. It's from twenty thirteen. So there have been new versions of this, and uh, more advancement in it. Um, but this is a review of a product. So from this company, CNET, they're actually uh, a very old uh, tech company, old you know, uh, in terms of in technology. They've been around since the late 90s. Uh, so uh, being in technology on the web for 20 years, yes, it's an old company. Uh, and uh, they have these reviews of tech products. Well, they make money. Uh, they've got this video. There was a little uh, advertisement beforehand. If I had clicked on JC Penny, uh, they would have made some money off of that. Uh, this particular one here, this number of reviews, this number of thumbs up, this number of comments, all of that goes together for uh, the value of what this company is looking for. Uh, they write articles and make videos on tech reviews. So uh, when I've said, okay, if I've got Victor's Bakery, the main goal of Victor's Bakery is to sell cupcakes. The goal of a company like CNET is their reviews. Well, uh, they need to make money off of advertising and such. So JC Penny ad on the front of that helps with that. Uh, yes. So the presenter, I'm assuming, works for Yes, this is one of the ones that I would say this is the most professional of all that I'll show you here. Because CNET's a big company, they pay their talent. They have they had two cameramen right there holding big old expensive cameras. They have a they they probably it was loaned to them, but then they have access to this expensive hardware. So yeah, this this is like a big endeavor, and he's you know comfortable in front of the camera and all of that. So you've got music in the background, you've got graphics pointing to the the hardware, you've got different shots. There was a, a shot from inside his point of view somewhere. So. He and then there they are like on the city streets and such, uh, and then at the end they they put in a little joke, a little joke scene where he gets um, rebuked by his friend. So uh, yeah, this is kind of like the most professional one. But the idea of here it's a review uh, review video. Uh, so think in terms about how can I do it for myself or how can I get my followers, my fans, my subscribers to do that for me. Offer something in return for a, a review. So with review videos, review videos, um, entice some offer to your uh, followers if they review your product. Remember, uh, if you couple the networks together, if you use um, Facebook, maybe you boost a post 
on Facebook that says calling all creatives uh, create a one minute video talking about our product for a chance to win X Y and Z so you spend you know one dollar five dollars fifty dollars whatever monetization uh, boosting on Facebook to direct people to your uh, to your YouTube and that reminded me about my tip actually um, if you spend money uh, on those other networks and then uh, promote your YouTube videos, that's hopefully helping you get uh, going uh, going viral on YouTube in terms of someone creates a video about your product, you promote it, or they promote it. Maybe they've got lots of followers. Maybe they've got a lot of likes and such, and you get free advertising. Uh, the tip here. Uh, I would say uh, old way, modern way. Upload your video to your site. Upload to YouTube. So um, the old way is I record the video, I prepare it, I edit it, I upload it to my site. I have a GoDaddy account or Bluehost or whatever, and I upload my videos to my site on, on GoDaddy on Bluehost. That's the old way. That's also kind of problematic because it uses up your storage. It uses up your uh, resources. It uses up the space on the on the server. It slows down the site. Um, uh, it taxes your um, your account when you upload it onto your own YouTube. Uh, when you put it up on 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 YouTube, it's unlimited space, unlimited speed. When you when you um, buy these accounts at Bluehost and GoDaddy and such, there's different tiers. There's different tiers. And if you pay for the lowest level of service, your site might be slow. So if you're putting a bunch of videos on your site, they all have to download. People want to watch uh, your, your videos, if, and you have a slow site, people will not like that. YouTube, on the other hand, they give you unlimited space. You can upload as many videos as you want. YouTube's servers are all over the world, so they're very fast. YouTube servers, you know, don't crash, basically, compared to your own server. So you can embed your video. So the recommendation, use YouTube as the place where you have your videos, and then embed the video on your site. If you're looking at any YouTube video right now, every vid almost every video has a share below it, next to thumbs up, thumbs down. If you click share here, then it says, OK, let's, uh, let's send this video to Facebook, or Tumblr, or Pinterest, or email, or these other ones, Google+, Twitter. So every video, by default, has the ability to share. Unless the person that uploaded it turned it off, Every video has the ability to share it to these networks. There's the, the, the direct link to it. Also, we have embed. With embed, it will give me a code to put onto my site. I copy and paste that on my site, and now this video shows up on my site. I don't have to upload it onto my site. I don't have to use the resources of my site. This right here, I can copy and paste it, and then the video will show up on my site. Yes? You're not leaving the site and going back to YouTube. You're doing the video on my site. site, but it's stored on YouTube. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And we have some options over here. Show suggested videos when the video finishes. No, I don't want anyone else's video. Uh, showing up um, on my site 
show the player controls. Well, the player is the pause play and all of that. Uh, do I want that, yes or no? Usually, yes, I want people to pause, play, and rewind. Show the video title and player actions. Uh, well, that's the ones on top over here. You see the name of the video is right there, plus a couple of other options, watch later, share. These are things that you would then further share the video. If you don't want that, um, you can turn that off. And um, this last one, I think this is the one about ads. Let's see, is there an info on that? I thought I remember there was a little info. What is that? But I think turning that on turns off the ads. I have to double check it. But if I activated ads on my YouTube channel, it would play ads on my YouTube channel, of course. But I think that if you turn this off and then, or turn it on, and then embed on your site that uh, deactivates it. So I would copy this, paste it into my site, and then my video on YouTube would appear on my site, and the person would not leave my site. They'd still be on my site and watch the video off of YouTube. So under every video, yes. Are there any uh, issues with copying and pasting any YouTube videos onto your site, or is it something specific for your? Well, that's the thing. That, that's the thing that is. Um, the question on every social network nowadays in that these ideas of copyright and such you know there's still there's they're on the books and there's copyrights and all of that but this easily shareable nature of all of the internet really muddies things so cnet has allowed share my video they they left the option on to share that doesn't necessarily mean like, yeah, go ahead and steal my video. But they're, they're saying, yeah, you can share it on your own sites. You can technically embed it on your own site. If they didn't want it shared, they would have turned off the button that says share. Now, I'm not trying to, of course, blame the victim because that's by default on. And it's a big old issue, and I'm not a lawyer and all of that. But if a video is online, most likely someone wants it to be shared. If I don't want my content to be shared, I shouldn't put it online. Again, that's blaming the victim, but that's the nature of the internet and all of that. If you don't want something shared, don't put it online. Uh, so it should be shareable, it should be fair use, and all of that stuff. But it gets tricky if it was a photo or something, correct? Yeah, a photo is a little bit more... Uh, yeah, it is trickier because if there's a great photo on someone's site, yeah, I can do right-click, save the photo. But most likely they don't want that, although there's you know, that right-click, save, that's always there regarding videos yeah usually they're shareable because CNET wants this video to be seen more they will happy they'll be happy for the free publicity just like I would be happy that my video gets shared so I'm gonna leave it to be shareable so that I might go viral are Get you aware of any issues that have come up with that problem of someone saying no oh, they want my video to be seen in my people from in my case from what I've experienced people have had that issue with photos not with video. I had a, a student years ago that said, I borrowed this great looking photo of a shot of Imperial Beach for my company, for my uh, little business in Imperial Beach. But then they came at me with a lawyer saying, well, we shot that photo. Why are you using our photo? I haven't really heard it with video. Uh, but again, usually when you share stuff to these networks, to these networks, you want it to further go viral. The guy had gotten it off someone else's website, which is usually that's the no-no. Question. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say that's why it's so important to it. Yeah, the the branding. So on, um, if it's if it's a photo in the corner, I would put my address, my my co my website address, my copyright notice, and all of that. If it's a video, you know, they've got their branding on throughout the video about CNET here and there, and Brian Tong, and all of that, and you know, they've got the branding. So remember to put these little things in your video. So even if it kind of goes viral and goes out there somewhere. Uh, it's got your 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 name and address or whatever on it to kind of bring it back to you. Traffic. Yeah. I, I've looked at copyright quite a bit. Um, the, the, the sort of the essence of it is there's an implied copyright on all works of art. Like all artistic works have an implied copyright. Um, which, what, what, what the implied copyright is designed to do is preclude you from taking my artwork and making money from it. And Really, my only recourse, we've got to register those copyrighted images or videos with the Copyright Office. 
Otherwise, when you collect, is the cost of creation which is more. So to, to get damages, you've got to go through a registration process with the copyright office, which is pretty straightforward. Yeah, so everything that's fixed in a tangible medium, you automatically get the copyright for it, basically, but then if you really want to eventually sue someone for it, you have to register it. No, you do a copyright filing, and you can do up to 10,000 images in a per filing, $55 per filing, up to 10,000 images, I believe, but the file sizes are... Really small, so you don't have to sit and file a breaking them down. Oh, really? Yeah, I, like I said, I've looked at these pretty extensively. And with the background doing that, so I kind of know how to read that stuff. Yeah, so there's a lot of nuance. Yeah, right, right on the Copyright Office site, there's real clear instructions on how to go about doing it. Mm -hmm. and it's not a difficult process. Just time and consuming. Accumulating all the things. You've got, you, and, and you, you don't have to file that copyright before you use it. You've got to file it early within 30 or 90 days. Of pre, like, so if I, if I did go out and do a bunch of photos, I post them. As long as I file that copyright filing within either 30 or 90, I don't remember days, I don't remember which it is, that, that is registered as of the date of creativity. That's a good point for ourselves to do. On the opposite side of the coin, there's still that issue about, well, what about someone else's video and all of that. And usually I would say for someone else, oh, someone else's content, always try to create your own original content. I see a great video or a photo on something, uh, I, I would say, can you create your own version of it? There's a great, great photo, I'm trying to sell cupcakes. Well, why would I use someone else's photo of the cupcakes? I want to shoot my own photo of a cupcake. Why would I use someone else's video of something I want to make my own? Maybe I'm not so talented to make a great video like this. You don't have to make the same sort of perfect kind of video like that, but make your own version. That then definitely helps you avoid these copyright issues. Make your own version. Okay, two more lists and advertisements. Uh, this is an idea here of This one's top five New York style restaurants in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, uh, on the opposite, where I where I showed you the one uh, from the tomatoes, which I think is one of the best examples of video. Unfortunately, I would say this is the opposite. Uh, I'll show you a few points about why this I don't think this is a very good video, but let's look at it first for a moment. Sabatino Cavallo here, greatercharleston.com. This is the first installment of the New York Perspective. And what better subject to start with than the top five New York style pizza places in the Greater Charleston area. Okay, so he's going to review uh, pizza shops. Uh, and it's a list of the top five. So any list, top 5, top 10, top 50, top 3, whatever. The, the number doesn't matter. Uh, but this kind of video is, is very popular in terms of like some quick amount of information. I'm busy all day long, everyone's very busy, but when you kind of put it into little chunks, 5 things, I can watch that, I have a moment to watch that. Top 3 things, top 10 things, whatever. So some amount of number of things. Um, this, that's what this video is the idea of. So top X things, uh, top five best whatever, um, you know, bottom ten worst whatever. It can be best, it can be worst, it can be any number, uh, that, that kind of video. Uh, in this case it's reviewing pizza shops. But I show it also as an example of not a very good video, and let me break down why it's not that good. So sometimes it helps knowing what's not good to avoid it to do better. So let's start it one more time here. The first thing is, okay, someone obviously paid a lot of money for this amazing logo. It's going on way too long. Why isn't the video started yet? GreaterCharleston.com. I've been talking so far, and the video has not started. Okay, it took 15 seconds of branding before the video started. Don't do that. Even 15 seconds is way too much. 
people uh, are going to get annoyed and leave the video if the good stuff hasn't started yet. If the good stuff hasn't started yet. So I would say, if you're not obvious about what your video is in the first five seconds, you might have a problem. What's that? Brand in three to five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, you, you just show the name of your company in five seconds, or you could have the video starting and the name of your company is already there. You don't have to spend time showing the name of your company, then the video, you can start the video and the name of your company appears. If you're not um, obvious about what your video is within five to 10 seconds, you may want to edit. So this video is nine minutes long. And yeah, 15 seconds and nine minutes is not a big deal. But the thing is that it is 15 seconds. Why am I still looking at their company logo rotating and making cool sounds and all of that for 15 whole seconds? Okay, then the video starts. Finally, the New York perspective. Sabatino Cavallo here, greatercharleston.com. He's got a microphone, but I can barely hear him. <laughs> the first installment of the New York Perspective. And what better subject to start with than the top five New York... Okay, so... Um, yeah, sound... Um, sound versus voice mix. Uh, don't let your music overpower your voice. So obviously, if you've got music, you don't have to have music. But if you've got music, don't have the music louder than the voice. I still think, though, even without the music, I think his voice is still too low. Uh, maybe they forgot to plug in the microphone or something. Uh, but yeah, he's got a microphone, and I, I, can't, I can't hear him. Style pizza place in the greater Charleston area. I do like that they change the shots and all of that, but um, I don't know if it's very obvious for you on the projector, but when I'm looking at it here on my screen, it, it looks too pixelated. I see the edges, like, see, see that's way too fuzzy? This video is not that old, but it doesn't look like it's in HD quality. It looks over compressed or something. Look at that, look at these jagged edges. And that doesn't look... And the number right there, a number, you know, text should be perfectly crisp, clear, uh, like that. Uh, it should be perfectly crisp and clear, but uh, here it, um, even those edges look kind of weird. So this video is in, is in 720p, which is barely HD, but it um, doesn't look HD, so to that... It's both. It's both. Most likely, um, most likely. Well, the most cameras nowadays usually record in HD. It's so rare to not find HD anymore. So it could be the camera is not HD, but also when you edit it in Movie Maker or iMovie, you have different kinds of settings to use and maybe they didn't choose HD setting either. So it is dictated by the hardware itself and the and the software. But, but you that would, that would affect the file size, right? If you're not putting if you're embedding it as opposed to putting it in the website, you don't have to download HD or something. Yeah, there's no issue not to use HD. I remember when I was dabbling in all of this stuff back in the nineties, yeah, it was always a big important thing. Well, how small can I make my video? My hard drive is only one gigabyte and um you know, we have the 56K modems and all of that. Like, I've got to compress it as much as possible. 17 years later, 20 years later, there's no limit now. Make it as HD as, as, as possible, and YouTube has infinite space. And even if you buy on GoDaddy and such the bigger packages, well, they're going to give you, you know, 10 gigabytes of space or whatever or more, unlimited. Uh, so your video should be in HD nowadays. Chris. Sharp visuals, <coughs> especially text. That number five looks kind of weird and fuzzy, so 
when we looked at when we used Movie Maker, I said just choose the default, and the default was HD. If you had recorded an HD video, it will output an HD video unless you need to change it. There was the option that said uh, and, uh, compress the video down for email size. Okay, that's when it's going to lose quality. It has to travel through email. That's what might have happened here. Who knows? I do like uh, the different parts about changing the perspective. Look at the menu. Uh, look, look at that item there. Uh, fade in, fade out. That, that's good. The, that sort of cinematography is good. But overall, it, it also does seem a little dark. And that makes sense because when you're back in the kitchen, there's not a lot of light coming in there at that point. We're at Vincent's Pizza 3 in Mount Pleasant, number 5 on the list. Now I got something special to show you. First of all, this is a plain cheese slice, but I call this pizza precision. What we have here is a... Do you hear a constant buzz in the background? A beautiful crust on top. A static or a hiss. Yeah. Followed by a space of tomato sauce. That's the problem of shooting on location. You don't realize it, but right now there's a lot of ambient sound. If you listen carefully, you hear the projector. So there's all of this constant noise going around. Why didn't he use his microphone at that point, where he had it on the other shot? On that other shot. So you have the ability to edit some of that constant uh, static. Yes. So they didn't. You should always see right after the. So regarding audio. Usually, the built-in microphone of a device is terrible. Usually, you have to check on your particular device. But oftentimes on these cell phones and such, if you're recording, oftentimes the cell phones have very, very good video quality. What lacks is the audio quality. Because oftentimes, these are designed to capture good audio when you have them like this. So if you've got them right here, they've got you know six microphones to capture your voice and all of that. But if I'm recording someone a few, several feet away, that's another ballpark. And the audio has to travel through the environment, and it's going to pick up other sounds, and it might not do good noise cancellation and all of that. So built-in microphones on devices often are not that great. Uh, so uh, to deal with that, if you're using a cell phone, uh, you might need to get closer. So if I'm, I have, if I have a person uh, sitting on this chair that I'm going to interview, uh, if I'm standing way over here, I'm, I'm way too far. I'm, I'm recording too much, too much of the background, um, and the voice is a little too far. If I get a little closer over here, uh, the, there's less distance for the voice to travel, so it will pick it up better. And I might also frame them a little better if I get a little closer. Yes. Are there like plugins? You know, uh, I'm getting, plug get, getting to that. Yes. Getting to that. So one way uh, is if you've got this cell phone, uh, you can just simply get closer. Now there's also other a variety of uh, wired and wireless uh, microphones. So um, the the um, the plug, if your phone has the plug, um, that that usually people use it for headphones. They plug that in, they they listen to their music. Oftentimes, this plug here also serves as an input for a microphone. So you can uh, buy a, a separate microphone and plug it into your phone, and that oftentimes uh, will work as picking up sound from the microphone. So your audio jack is often also an input. You can plug a microphone into it. So I can, I can be standing here, I plug the microphone in, and they're holding the microphone over there, and then they've got the microphone there, and it's perfect audio. There's also wireless versions. You pair it through Bluetooth, and then you've got a microphone. They've got their microphone. They're over there. I'm way over here. It records the audio much better than standing this far away. Um, you also have, uh, here's uh, kind of a cool hack. Um, okay, I have got a cell phone, 
and, and my partner on the recording team has a cell phone. I'm going to get her cell phone and put it near the person and have that recording. And then I'm going to stand over here with my camera and record here. So I'm recording close up over there and the video over here. With Movie Maker, I can then combine both. I combine the close up audio with my video at this distance. So two cell phones. One close to capture audio, plus one far to capture video. Yeah, but um, I need to set this one up this close by. You know, I need to set it up somewhere here so that it's looking at them and their audio. I just, you know, if you just put it down on the table, it's going to record the table. I don't care. I'm more interested in their voice. But I can get creative and put two different cell phones in two different shots, and then there's more video, more visual interest that I can be creating. So one far to capture the video then combine in your editor. So um, in you know Hollywood movies and all of that, they you saw when, when Brian was reviewing the Google Glass, he had two cameramen, two different angles. Those are combined into one video. You can do that in a low-tech way with two cell phones, um, two different shots and, and audio and such. What I also really like are lapel microphones, also known as lav microphones, lavalier, I think that's how you spell, lava, lavalier, lavalier. Lava the thing about the headset is you're going to be obviously wearing a headset. If you're recording the person and they're going to be on camera, they're going to, you're going to see the headset. If they're not on the camera, the headset is great. If they're going to be on, on camera, a lapel mic is a little mini mic that plugs in right here. It's often really small and discreet. So I got a little microphone right here, and then that plugs into the cell phone, and then I'm standing way over here, and then the little lapel is right here, unobtrusive, and it's feeding into the camera. Lapel microphone. Pretty affordable. Yeah. Um, yeah. 29 and up. Yeah. Yeah, I use one on, on my videos and I really like it. 29 and up. Obviously, with better quality, you can get $129, even better quality. But what's that? 29, you just pay cash? Of course, yes. We've also got um, these modern handheld hand -held recorders. Um, one that I one that I like is uh, from uh, Zoom brand. Let me show it to you in a moment. But this is a this is a microphone that you buy. It's completely self-contained. It has a little stand, and you put it down there, and it stands up. It's got a microphone, and oftentimes they can record in surround sound and all of this cool stuff. Uh, let me show the one that I have that I like. This is the Zoom H2N. So it looks like this. So it looks like these classic old microphones, you don't quite get the scale of it, but it's got little feet and you put it on the desk right there and uh, it's recording and you've got your video recording so you've got an audio track in, in this device and then you've got the video track on this device and then you combine them in Movie Maker. Uh, these also have an input, you can see it here on the side, so you can also uh, plug in an extra microphone. You know, two different people, you're interviewing two people. One is talking to this device, and then another microphone is plugged in, and the other person is talking in their device. All that is being recorded into the one Zoom microphone, and then you combine that with your video um, in, in your video editor. The price on this one... Uh, Zoom, is brand Zoom is the brand, yep, and the H2N is the one that I have. It's about $143, $118. There's also the Zoom H1. There's a whole family of them. Say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I would I would check reviews because people are gonna say, well, it's twelve dollars, but it doesn't sound that good. So we check reviews. This is the H1. It's got a different sort of form factor. It's a lot more compact, but it still has inputs. It's got the microphones. This one's at ninety nine, and it records on the device itself, and then you combine the audio in post production, which is in Movie Maker. So all of that is about audio because uh, a good video um, has good visuals and good audio, which almost sounds obvious. Of course, a video should look good and sound good. That's a video. But the details of doing it are elude us so easily. Simply the lighting. Oh, I stood in front of the window in the wrong direction. Oh, there was too much wind in the ambience. That doesn't sound good. And you know, our senses trick us because our eyes adjust so easily to the light, our, our hearing adjusts to the environment. But these machines, we haven't really been able to perfect these things to simulate what we have naturally. Uh, focus goes off and the whole rest of the 20 minute video is out of focus. The audio was terrible from the beginning, the whole video is terrible. So creating the content can be a lot of effort. That's why I said once a month a new video is a good goal because you could get really complex with these. Yeah. Did I hear you say I could do use a a phone with a good mic to record audio, and use my camera to record the video, I don't care about the audio, and take the, the good quality audio, the good quality video, get rid of the bad quality video. I, that's all. Editing. Yeah, that's doing it all in the editor, yeah. And it would absolutely sync up. Yes. I would say one tip to help you sync up. You guys know what this is, I'm sure. Everyone knows what that is. The purpose of that is before the movie starts, um, they clap it. Well, what's happening is someone in the movie crew is recording audio and someone is recording video. So you have two different sources to sync up. Unless they both started recording at the exact same moment, there might be a little bit of unsynchronization. The clapper board is uh, to make one loud clap so that then when they're in their editor, they see this loud clap ma matches up with this loud clap, and then we sync it up, and both tracks are perfectly synced up. Now, I'm not saying to go buy one for $10 or even a dollar. This works. <laughs> that works. If I've got one microphone on my desk and one video on a tripod, before I start recording, I said, okay, we're ready to record. I like to do three claps like that, because then in Movie Maker, you see three spikes. You see three spikes in the track. When you line up your video track and your audio track, you know your video track has the bad audio, your audio track has the good audio, and you see three spikes on one track and three on another. Once you synchronize those three like that, everything is synchronized. That's the purpose of that, which has been around in Hollywood for over a hundred years. Someone figured that out, and they still do it. Now they have the digital ones, and you can just clap. It does the same thing. So right here, pro tip, clap three times before you record as a way to be able to synchronize a uh, synchronize separate audio and video tracks. You'll see the claps in your video editor. The clapper board is a device used in filmmaking and video production to assist in synchronizing of picture and sound. We'll look at one more item, then we'll take a break. The plain old direct advertisement, uh, selling a business. And this is an, this is an example of one that we did for a client. So I'll, I'll show that example.
as the name of the website. So it went directly to showing the food, you know, the preparation of this dish, uh, advertisement at the end uh, to remind you to visit the website. Hopefully, hopefully as you watch the video, it entices you. Hey, I might want to try that. Uh, and um, that was from 2013, so this was an early one we did for clients. As I watched them again, I'm like, well, I would have improved this, I would have changed that. Uh, but, yeah. It, yeah, it, uh, they, they didn't go for the package to actually pay to have more people see it. But it, uh, this company, I mean this uh, client, they, they have very good... Um, they have very good word of mouth and traffic, and they thought, well, we made the video, but we don't want to pay for it to, to boost it. So, if it's embedded on the website, does it get a click? Or yeah. Does that count? It counts them. It counts them. Here's one more just to show off. Same sort of idea, short 40 seconds, a lot of different shots, preparing the dish, and then final plating and such. Uh, and yeah, it took a lot of effort. It's 40 seconds, but this took a lot of effort in terms of we went to the restaurant, recorded a lot of different footage. There's still a lot that we, that we could use to make future videos. There's the music, there's the synchronization, there's cutting from here and there, and it takes practice to when do I cut it? Is this playing too long? Does this make sense? And then uh, and then it's got the um, the website at the end. Now the funny thing about all of this video stuff, okay, 162 views, a lot of effort to create. Mm -hmm. Then there's this other video from the client, 2,000 views. And that one doesn't have as much effort as the one that had a lot of effort. So you never know which video is going to be the hit. You never know if it's the one that you spent so much time and effort, or the one that was a quick recording that wasn't that much effort. Can we look at that one? Sure. You want to keep getting hungrier? Uh, you know better than me, preparation of good food is done with a fresh ingredients, simplicity in preparation of food, which makes the difference. And as my mama used to say, canta nella cucina, which means sing while you're doing that, and be happy, and this is it. God bless America. I love you guys. Thank you. Okay, first of all, we're about to serve the risotto al nero. Garlic and oil, 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 we sauteed some uh, fresh black mussels. Okay. So it was, a, it was an early version of, of uh, our video production life. And um, obviously it could be much more improved. But yeah, this one got over 2,000 views compared to those other ones, which are much more polished. You never know what's the hit. It, it could be a lot about like what the subject is. This is risotto nero, which is risotto with black ink or squid ink. Uh, so kind of very interesting dish, not that common. Whereas those other ones, well, salmon and you know sorts of things, those are kind of common. And here it's a very uncommon dish. And maybe the subject matter and the keywords. We'll talk about. Well, you made a great video, but we also have to engage in optimization, keywords and descriptions and all of that. So again, YouTube is a big topic. So it's not just about creating the video and the idea of the video. It's also about optimizing the video and then maybe even selling or boosting the video. So we'll we'll cover all of that, but. Here's the example where it was not a great video, but a lot of views. We saw tornado. So then that's automatically going to go off to someone else's video. 
It's going to go over here to Risotto Nero with Chef Holly, 2,000 views, 2,000 views, 8 subscribers. Um, that one probably has even more subscribers, but that's the thing about this algorithm that no one quite knows how it works because this video has as many views as this other YouTube channel, and they've got 7,000 viewers, uh, 7,000 subscribers. Whereas the restaurant here had eight subscribers, and it has as many views as theirs. And probably theirs is, yeah, theirs is much more professional. Look at that shot there of the nature and the wind and everything. And uh, our video, which is honestly not a good video, it's got as many views as this super professional video. So sometimes um, you don't know what will go viral. So regarding the advertisement, well, that was an obvious kind of video, and then it'll reach more people if you boost, which we'll cover. But these are six basic ideas. There's other ideas as well, and uh, you can get a lot of inspiration by you yourself. I've got a product. I'm going to search for it on YouTube. I'm a, I'm a bakery. I sell cookies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search YouTube for videos about cookies and see what others are creating, getting ideas. How can I do my own version? Maybe I'll go through the the video school and get inspired on making these videos uh, because the big draw of YouTube is video content so you can't do much on YouTube for your business if you don't have a video uh, let's take one more break and then uh, when we come back we'll start to set up our YouTube and start to see how that's gonna work we're gonna take a short break this time because we had a long break last time just until 1220 so quick five minutes take a take five minutes break and we'll be back at 1220 those legs stay active if we, you know that 